Hey everyone, Adrian Graham here, product designer for Bifrost, and there's been a few questions on the forums about color sets, and there's a bit of uh, confusion. They're kind of undocumented, and they're not ideal, but until we get velocity fields in there, this is, uh, what, this is what we have to work with. So um, a simple example that I want to show you today is uh, I've got this sphere, and it is deformed uh, to soft body, um, just with a uh, volume axis field and some uh, turbulence crawling it around. Um, I just wanted uh, a, a, an emitter object that had to, it wasn't just a perfect sphere. So uh, I'm emitting uh, a simple liquid from here. I'm in my 2016 uh, SP1, by the way. Uh, let me turn off spatial adaptivity. And I don't need time stepping. I'm going to turn that down. OK, so as it emits, also, an important thing to point out here is that gravity magnitude is zero. So there's effectively no gravity magnitude. And there's no gravity at all in this sim. Um, the particles, I believe, will uh, adopt a tiny bit of their uh, velocity upon emission. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to paint, uh, paint some things. Now, the very, uh, if you select an object, a piece of geometry, that is a bifrost emitter. You will see if you go into modeling under uh, mesh tool, uh, sorry, mesh display color set editor. There are these two color sets that have automatically been created, uh, liquid density, bifrost liquid density and liquid expansion. And those are pretty much the only two that we provide for you uh, right off the bat, but you can create another one. Now these are if you want to paint things like the density, that's for another uh, blog posting, but um, in this case, we're going to paint Bifrost Velocity. And there's a, uh, anything that begins with the word Bifrost is going to be listened to by uh, the solver. So if we create uh, just uh, a generic, just with the defaults, a generic color set, and double click, and we're going to call this Bifrost Velocity. And hit Update. So now if we select the sphere and we right mouse click, you'll see there's a little Bifrost menu down here, and there's Paint liquid density expansion rate and oh, it's off the screen for you guys. Let me see if you can. No, it's still off the screen. Um, let me move Maya up a bit. There you go. Bifrost paint velocity. So let me just move this back in. So what I'm going to do is uh, first I need to double click the tool itself. Let me close up the attribute editor so I can see stuff and. Um, I can just flood it with, with black, all right? So there's still going to be no velocity. Um, now, we're transposing velocity as a color. Um, so so we, uh, we're going to use the RGB as uh, X, Y, Z uh, for, for defining the direction. So if I go in and change the color value, it's, by default, it's HSV. So I'm going to change this to RGB 0 to 1. And I'll make it uh, go off in the, uh, the positive x direction. So I'll make the color just 1, 0, 0. And I'm going to flood that. So now we see it's all red. And if we hit play, you'll see the particles are moving in, in, uh, in the x direction. Now, the, obviously, you can overdrive this. Um, I'm going to make this 10. And the color doesn't really matter. Oh, I need to flood it. And look at that. So now we've got crazy amounts. Um, <clears throat> what we can also do is paint some, uh, paint some values. So let's go back to black, flood it with that. I'm going to uh, paint uh, like three or something, and uh, that's way too big. Make the radius one, uh, maybe 0.5, and I'll make it a softer fall-off brush there. So I can uh, just play around with, uh, with that and then maybe slide the colors. I'm just going to do a combination of colors here and see as they overlay they get sort of different coloring and stuff. Uh, could be kind of interesting and I'm still overdriving it to a certain extent. And let me just frame again and I'm going to get something in the greenish space there. All right, so this is obviously you can do this a lot more um, elaborately with uh, with the real paint job, but I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, let's see what this looks like. So I get sort of randomized directionality here. So it's obviously not perfect. 
but you get the idea. This is what we're able to do. And uh, if we uh, turn on Scratch Cache, perhaps we could have a look at this a little, uh, a little closer. Um, you might be tempted to uh, to hide the particles underneath the, uh, or or even hide the uh, the soft body sphere. But um, the problem there is that it won't compute when a nucleus object is hidden. It won't compute. So, um, but here we get you know some interesting results. And uh, just to give you an idea of what you can do by painting color sets, you can also paint vorticity. But hold on a second before we do that, we're going to uh, display the velocity just like zero to three, so you get an idea of what if we hide this while we're scratch cached so we can still play. But we get, you know, a bit of an interesting result there. What would be even cooler is if you uh, had an animated texture feeding into that. Um, but that is, again, for another blog post. So uh, there's a little, uh, little tidbit for you. And um, this is somewhat to, uh, can take the place of an accelerator. And it is faster than an accelerator because it's, uh, it only gets the, uh, it only computes on on the actual emission, because um, once the it basically says once the particle is emitted, once the flip particle is emitted, go in this direction. Um, and it's actually, you know, what's interesting is uh, you can look at the values of emission. Let's just go. Uh, so there are a bunch of particles emitted here, and uh, we go into the liquid, and we turn on numeric, and we look at the velocity. And that's kind of difficult to see because the stuff isn't really on the, if we, you know, there's so many particles, let's turn it down. Uh, turn down the display dramatically. Let's show like 100 or something. So stuff that's on the, near the surface, you could see the values here like I've been using. So um, it, it, if you were that uh, brave, you, or if you're that ambitious, you could, you know, take this value, 1.482, negative 0.238, and you could uh, sample that uh, color right there. Well, let's see what that color is right around there. Oop. I guess I'm ambitious enough today. And let me just grab that. I don't know if that corresponds. HSV RGB. So what did I, where did I click? I can't even remember. I think it was around that greenish there, 592343. And... Uh, five, nine, two, three, four, three. It's. I guess they don't correspond because they might be. Oh, because the velocity is uh, might be normalized in a different way. So, um, anyway, I think I hope you got a little bit uh, out of this little uh, snippet, and uh, I'll supply this file uh, in the uh, in the blog post. So have a have a great day.